hope you have your grease lightning ink pens out today because I've got a, a boatload of scriptures to lay on you. We started last week talking about prayer and uh, we're getting ready to go into 21 days of prayer and fasting. And over the next few weeks, um, I'll be handing out different resources to you to help build your prayer life and your faith and uh, the idea of fasting and prayer. Um, I, we do have one out in the lobby this morning, um, and I dated it for the 10th through the 31st. That's 21 days. You can start today. You can start the 10th, um, whatever. Um, but I wanted to build you up in faith, knowing that God sometimes will use... L- let me just clarify When you fast and you go without something, typically it's food, and not everybody can go without food. If you've got a medical condition or whatever and you you can't go without food, that's fine. There's other ways to do it. But in fact, there are many different types of fasts, and maybe we'll, we'll talk about those as time goes on. But it's not a magic pill where you're saying, okay, God, I'm working harder, so now you're going to answer my prayer better. Anybody ever thought that? Because I don't know about you, but I tend to be that way sometimes. I tend to be like, well, if I work harder and do better, maybe God will bless me more. But that's not the way God works. God is not moved, firstly, by your deeds, although they do, it is a part of it. God is not moved to answer your prayer even by your need. But God is moved by your faith. God is moved by your faith and your trust in Him. Now, with that said, sometimes when we fast, we're saying, this is what we're saying. In fact, all the time, it's what we should be saying. God, I'm not trying to make a bargain with you that if I go without this, you'll give me this. That doesn't work. But what we're saying is, God, I'm going to set my fleshly desires and needs to the side so that I can more clearly focus on you, and I'm going to spend time with you more than ordinary And then what happens is in that time, it's not the going without something that is the magic. It is the seeking God that aligns our heart and our will with his so that it enables him to move in our hearts more deeply and more freely. Anybody catching that? God desires to bless his people. And in this new year, it's a good practice to do every beginning of the year, and we refocus and reshape our hearts towards the heart of God. We taught last week on prayer, and we're going to continue this morning. Luke chapter 11 and verse 1, kind of our theme verse for the next couple of weeks. One day, Jesus was praying in a certain place. Just as a side note, denoting that he had a special place, it was his place to pray. You don't have to, you can play in a different place every day, but it's just denoting the discipline of going to your same place in prayer. When he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. And so then he began to teach in what we call the Lord's Prayer, and It's recorded in the Gospels. I'm going to skip over to Matthew chapter 6, verse uh, 9. And this is what he said. In this manner, this is the way you're going to do it. Therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. We talked about that last week. Honoring God and what worship is. And worshiping God and lifting his name. But then the next stage of his prayer was, your kingdom come... Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So I want to talk this morning a little bit about your God, your will be 
done. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, prayer is this interesting thing. It's communication between man and God. And it should not be just a one-way communication. In fact, it shouldn't be just God, gimme, 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 as sometimes we have all done. I've done it myself because we all have needs that we need God to gimme, right? Amen? And, and He is God. We, need to God. we need God to gimme sometimes. I just made that up right now. You can laugh if you want to. It's okay. I know it's silly. But sometimes we need God to gimme. But we can also acknowledge that although there are many different parts to prayer, we can acknowledge that sometimes we need God to give me and we need to pray a prayer of blessing. As Randy just read in First Chronicles, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. He had faith in God. His mother had named him Jabez saying, I gave birth to him in pain. Now, some of us here are sitting in this room today in pain. Maybe Several of you have lost a loved one. Some of you are going through marriage conflict. Some of you are having trouble at work. Some of us are having trouble even just in our own minds and our peace of mind because the stresses and the chaos of life are large and they're looming. And we have struggle. Can somebody say Amen. Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. He wasn't a Debbie Downer. He wasn't disparaging. He wasn't prophesying doom and gloom. He was just simply acknowledging the fact that in this world, if you're living in this world, it doesn't matter if you're a believer or an unbeliever, you will have trouble. That's a promise that you can take to the bank. And in fact, that's a promise that none of you ever um, uh, uh, debate, right? Right? We never debate the fact that there's going to be trouble. We never debate the fact that there's going to be hardships and hard times and and laborings and, and troublesome things that happen in our life. There's going to be wins and there's going to be losses. But so many times we debate the power of blessing because we're not convinced that He's a true God of blessing because we go through so much pain. But Jabez, he was born in pain. Some of you mamas who have given birth to your babies, you, you know what it's like to give birth in pain. The coming of life comes from pain. The coming of blessing comes through pain. And it is through our pain and our lowliness and our, and our desperation that we turn to God and our faith says, my God, you are real. And in that time and in that moment when we turn to him, we recognize and realize just how powerful of a God we serve. For there is no depth There is no breath, there is no problem, there is no challenge that you can face that God is not bigger, that God's grace is not greater, that God's joy is more permanent. He is a great God even in the midst of pain. So Jabez was born into pain and his mother though acknowledged and and said to this, I gave birth to him in pain, but I will name him Jabez because I've cried out to the God of Israel. And Jabez cried out, now Jabez, the man of pain. You might identify with this. You might call yourself a man or a woman of pain today. Jabez cried out to the God of Israel, Oh, that you would bless me and enlarge my territory. Let your hand, God, be with me And keep me from harm so that I will be free from pain. This is not a prayer that was born out of, Oh, bless me as I go through my day, God. Which is nothing wrong with that. Amen. This was a prayer that was born out of tragedy And it was born out of struggle and was born out of desperation. And God, that you would protect me and your hand would be with me and not just protect me from pain that's out there, but deliver me from my pain. He wouldn't say deliver me from my pain if he wasn't in pain, right? 
He was in pain. He was struggling, and it was a prayer based out of struggle. But here's the bright side here. And God granted his request. My prayer for you today is that God would grant your request and he would deliver you from your pain and he would bear uh, blessing upon you. And, and Jabez cried out, I need your blessing. I can't make my borders any bigger. You, you, you see, what he was talking about there, let, let's just put it in 21st century English. I don't have enough, God. So back then, they measured their wealth by the amount of land that they had and the amount of livestock that they had and the amount of grain that they had and their, their, their provision and the supplies that they had. And, and, and if you had a lot of land, you had a lot of wealth, and you had a lot of resource to bless your family. But if you had small territory, you could not provide for your family. And what he's saying there is, God, I don't have enough to bless my family. Would you please enlarge my territory? And for us today in the 21st century, our territory might be, not be measured in land and cattle, although in this area, maybe, maybe. But your territory might be measured in different metrics. But whatever metrics you need to expand in your life, whether it's your job or your career, or whether it's just basic income, or whether it's, it's advancement, whether, whether you're in the beginning, middle, or the end of the stage of whatever you're going through, it doesn't matter if your territory needs to be enlarged. When you're faithful to God, He is faithful to you. And when you pray a prayer of blessing, I know this, you might not know the timeline. Now, here's the qualifier. So many people give up because their timeline doesn't match God's. But I, I guarantee you, if you will walk this life out faithful to God, He will never let you down and He will be faithful to you. When we walk in obedience, He comes in. That's why He had more favor than His brothers. He was walking in obedience to God and God's favor came upon him, and he was able to cry out, God, enlarge my territory because I don't have enough. Free me from my pain. And he was praying a prayer of blessing. You can do that same thing today. You can pray a prayer of blessing. You can pray a prayer that says, God, enlarge my territory. Genesis 12, 2, God says, I will bless you. And that you will be a blessing to others. That's a condensed version of that whole story. I'm not going to go into all of it today or we'll never get through the day. But, but, but God's saying that this. This is the principle, the underlying principle. God wants you to be blessed, not so that you can say I have a lot. God wants you to be blessed so that you can be a blessing. Amen? Some of you own companies. That means God has blessed you with a company. You're able to pass on that blessing by employing other people. They're not just there to serve you. You are blessing them. You're paying them a fair wage. You're paying them. You are, a ble you are blessed to be a blessing. Some of you, many of you, I've watched your generosity through the few months that we've been here, and you have been open-hearted and blessing to other people who have less than you, and, and, and God has blessed you so that you can be a blessing. God blesses this church so this church can be a blessing to the community. God blesses you as parents so that you can bless your children. God blesses your children so that they can bless their friends. God blesses you with faith so that when other people are walking through pain and tragedy like so many people that are in this room today, I, I notice the, the neck hugging and the, and the, and, and, and the, the warm words and the things that were happening before service. And that is what we do. We are blessed with our comfort of faith so that we can comfort those who are grieving. And we trust God. God, enlarge our territory in spite of our pain and through our pain so that we can be a blessing as well. Matthew seven eleven. If you then, I want you to consider this. Jesus is teaching if you, as, as earthly parents, though you are evil. Now, he's not, he's not necessarily saying that they were crooked people right there. What he's saying is, you living in your fleshly life, you're not God. Anybody in here God? If you can raise your hand right now, we're, we're going to like have some counseling sessions after church. 
No, we are not God. But even in our fallen state as human beings, we love our children. And he's saying, even though you are evil, you know how to give good gifts to your children. I, I think back to all the so many Christmases that we've had raising our little boys. And Christmas, we just finished Christmas, right? And we open gifts, and we know we're celebrating Jesus, and we're giving gifts because of the first gift, but, but, but we also like to be a blessing. And I remember how, even, whether we had a lot or we had little, we did everything that we could to bless our children. And that was the joy of the day, not what I could open under the tree, because that was insignificant compared to the joy of watching the smiles and hearing the giggles and 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 can you I know that you can imagine what it's like to have three boys in our case or three girls in your case or boys and girls and whatever but but there's children make christmas better and that was my joy And here Jesus is using that teachable moment right here saying that you, Keith, as flawed as you are, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more, think about this, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask Him? Sometimes we endure and bear our pain, and, and listen, I know I've been there, I'm not, I, I'm not standing in judgment, I've been there where all I do is just sit there and moan and groan, and my prayer is just a complaint session, and that's not really truly prayer. Anybody been there? Don't raise your hand right now. But, 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 but sometimes we do need to just realize, okay, whatever I'm going through is, is, is not good, But I'm going to come to you, God. And instead of just complaining about my situation, God, I'm going to turn to you and I'm going to say, God, I trust you and I know that you're my heavenly Father and you desire to give me good gifts and I need you to come through for me today. I need this new job. I need this this healing. I need this this blessing in my life. I need my children to be saved. God, I'm trusting you. And God is a God who loves to give gifts to his children. Are you his child today? Yes, well then he desires to give good gifts for you. So you can pray prayers of blessing. Then secondly, we can pray a prayer of influence. Ephesians 1.17 begins, I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know him better. Now, Paul is teaching the the, the church in Ephesian, Ephesus, the Ephesian people, he's teaching them here right now, I am praying for you, and I keep asking God to reveal himself to you and give you the Spirit, capital S, meaning the Holy Spirit, of wisdom and revelation. What he's meaning is he wants God to be revealed in you, to you, in such a way that you know the reality of who he is, not just informationally, but transformationally. That you have the very presence of God dwelling, not just, uh, uh, not just, not just in an ordinary way, but you know that you know that you know that you know that you have had an encounter with God. And I'm going to explain why here in just a moment. It reminds me of a time when I was out to eat. And I didn't know, but this dish had, and I don't know what it was called, but I'll make up a name of it for my own self right now and call it the hell pepper. See, it doesn't, you know what I mean just by the label. It ruined my dinner because I had an encounter with this pepper that was so hot that it torched my mouth so hard that there was no amount of anything that I felt like would ever take the pain away. And then I see these videos of people 
competing and trying to eat these hot peppers and who can eat the hottest. And you see them break out in sweats and, and their face turn red and that's what I looked like. I mean, I was, I was sweating and my face was red and I was coughing and gagging and yeah, just like anybody else, I was moaning and bemoaning my life because it was terrible. Somebody had put the wrong pepper in my dish. Nobody, nobody, but nobody could deny that I had, en- had encountered that pepper. They could tell me, oh, you know what, that pepper's not real, it's all in your head. I, there was no debate. On my end, I'd be like, okay, fine, believe what you want. I encountered the pepper. I have scars, emotional scars to prove it. My, I, I, and I like spicy food, mind you. I like flavor. I like all kinds of flavor. I like all kinds of food. But that traumatized me from peppers for a good long while. And I'm still careful to this day because I was traumatized because I had an experience that was memorable, that was significant, that was painful. Now let's tr- flip it to the, to the positive side. When you seek God and you come before God, and you encounter His presence, it does something to you. And this is what he's saying. And I'm kind of getting a a little ahead of myself for the next point, but, but you'll understand why. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which He has called you, the riches of His rich riches of His glorious inheritance in the saints. Here's the thing. We can know in our head that God wants to bless us. We can know in our mind that God's a good God. We can know in our mind that God is God, that there's only one God. We can know educationally all kinds of things about the Bible. In fact, I've talked to some people fruitlessly many, many times who know more probably about the Bible than I do. They've studied it deeper. They've studied it harder. They've, they know factually what the Bible says, but their eyes of their heart were not enlightened to the glorious richness of God's presence. They were not convinced of God. They did not identify God as God. They looked at the Bible as something as factual and not supernatural. But I'm here to tell you we serve a supernatural God. We serve a supernatural God who wrote a word of God who that is supernatural and that is transformational and that can change us. And what Paul's saying is I want you to understand in the knowing of your knower. Not just mentally but, but, but just like that hot pepper you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you know God and his realness so that when you are in front of others there is no doubt there is no debate there is no discussion you can love them with the love of God and you can display the reality of who he is whether they acknowledge him or not you are convinced and nobody can take that away from you why so that you can influence with the love of Jesus because here Here's a phrase, you might want to write it down. This is not original with me. I can't remember the name of the author, so I can look it up if you want it. But I, it's one of those phrases that stuck with me from a very young age. I read it, and it just stuck with me. Glory, meaning the presence of God, the glory of God, beheld, becomes glory revealed. We can only reveal the presence of God to others that we have encountered ourselves. For example, Moses, when he went up on the mountain to receive the Ten Commandments and he encountered God and he wanted to see God. And remember, nobody can actually see the presence of God fully because we're carnal, we're human, we're, we would fall dead because God is so pure and so powerful. But God the Bible says, allowed Moses just to see just a part of his back, just a glimpse of the the backside of his presence. And it was so powerful that when he came down from the mountain, he looked like he had been in the heart of a nuclear reactor and his face glowed and he shone and bore the glory of God physically and visibly. Had he not 
observed God and been in the presence of God, that could not have happened. Now, I'm not saying that that same thing's going to happen to you. That was a unique experience to Moses. I've never heard of that happening ever since. It never was recorded to anybody else. But here's what I'm saying. There is a relationship with God that in the, in the depths of your relationship, the love of your relationship, the encounter, the physical and spiritual encounter that you have with God, that you are able to relay that thing to others because you've already been there yourself. Amen? It's like the description of your favorite place, your favorite restaurant. You can describe it all day long based on other people's reviews, but until you have actually been there, until you've actually tasted the food, until you've actually been in that atmosphere, like you can talk about it or you can talk about your experience. Amen? So we pray for influence. Ephesians 3.20, now to Him, God, who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. It's all about Jesus. It's all about the God we serve. Now to Him, we're giving glory to Him who's able to do immeasurably. You can't measure the amount that God is able to bless you according to His power, not your power, not whatever faithfulness or whatever you can muster up. All those things are good. All those things we should be doing, we should be faithful, we should be serving, we should be generous, we should be all the things that He's asked us to be. But His power is what is at work in us. So we pray for blessing, pray for influence. Number three, and I'm almost done, pray for presence. I kind of got ahead of myself in, in point number two, but pray for presence. Acts eleven twenty one. 21, the Lord's hand was with them, and the great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. But people didn't turn to the Lord unless the Lord's hand was with them. Somebody say it with me, say with me. So many stories throughout the Bible talk about God walking with them, God being with them, and God displayed Himself to them. 2 Corinthians 3, 5, and 6, not that we are competent in ourselves to claim anything of our, or for ourselves, but our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. You see, we can be confident in a lot of things, but I got to tell you, if I had to be confident in my own abilities, they, they, at a certain time, they run out. At a certain point, my own abilities run out. And the needs that are surrounding me every single day are always bigger than I am. And you might have a need bigger than yourself today. But realizing that when we pray for the presence of God to be with us, an encounter with God changes everything. Because we are not competent in ourselves to have faith. We are not competent in ourselves just to have joy. We are not competent in ourselves to do anything. Because i got to tell you, there are many things that I do in my life that I, I, I just look at the positive. I just try to look, at, look, at, look on the bright side because it's a, you know, it's just what you need to do. you got to, well, maybe this, you know, I know this happened, but maybe it's because... This can come out of it. Or I know this happened. Well, maybe this good can come out of it. And always looking at the bright side. But in my own strength, those good positive things, those good positive uh, 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 um, beliefs, they run out at some point. Maybe you can identify with me. At some point, you've come to the end of your rope. You know, like, you know what? I've tried to believe the best, and I'm just done. I've tried 
to have faith and I'm just done. I've tried to believe that good things are coming my way and I'm just done because I am tired and I've run out of strength. Anybody relate with me today? A couple? A couple honest people and a couple afraid to raise your hand. It's okay to be, a, a couple of, it's okay to be afraid to raise your hand right now because I, I'm here to tell you it happens to every single one of us. But we serve a God that it's not because of our strength and our own competence but He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant. This new covenant says that it's not because I followed all the rules perfectly. It's not because I am super religious. It's not because I did everything the pastor said and, and then some. It's not because I checked off all the things on my to-do list. It's because I believe and I trust in a God that is supernatural and that loves me even in my flaws. That He loves me even in my mess. And He's not going to leave me in my mess. He's going to pull me out of my mess. And He's going to make me holy. And He's He's going to make me righteous and he's going to make me more like him. But in the meantime, I am not where I need to be, but I thank God I'm not where I used to be. He's a God who's transforming me. And it is his grace and his presence and my encounters with him on a daily, weekly, monthly, every, every time I can get a chance basis that he is transforming me from the inside out so that it is not based on my competence, but my faith in him. He is the one. He is the one. So pray for presence. Pray for blessing. Pray for influence. Pray for presence. And then lastly, pray for protection. 1 Peter 5, 8. The devil is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And I got to tell you, he is devouring. We've got to be careful how we pray. Reminds me of this guy who went hunting in Alaska. And uh, he got ahead of the guide. And the guy kept saying, you've got to stay back with me. You've got to keep back with me. You're going you're to get ahead of me. And I can't, I can't protect you if you're too far away from me. And the guy just was kind of an independent spirit. And he just kept forging ahead. And all of a sudden... The weather turned a little bad and it was windy and snowing hard and eventually he realized he was so far ahead he couldn't see the guide, the guide with the gun, and he neither could see him nor hear him and he realized he was lost. And he didn't know what to do and as he stood there, a polar bear came around the bend. And that polar bear raised up and he's like, here's lunch. And that guy fell to his knees and he prayed and he prayed, oh God, oh God, I need some help. Please, Lord, let this be a Christian bear. He raised up his eyes and he looked at this bear and that bear put his big old paws together and I, he said, thank you, Lord, for this meal you have prepared for me. <laughs> you see, sometimes we pray empty prayers. We pray prayers that might make us feel better. But I'm here to tell you today that God wants you to pray a prayer of protection. I think I'd be crying out, God, transport that guide up around this corner right now with that gun. Or God, give me wisdom to dive over the, the hill and slide to say, I, I don't know what I'd be praying, but I'd be praying something a little more effective than God make this be a Christian bear. Now that's a silly story, a made up story for sure, but it illustrates that sometimes we just put words out there thinking that we're praying when God wants us to connect with him in faith and God, I need your protection. I, I, I remember um, so many times... Uh, as children and even as young married people that every time we would leave our parents' homes that, that they would pray over us. God, 
protect them as they drive. Protect, keep your hand upon them as they drive. And I got to tell you, there were many times when I think I should have been dead at the end of a trip and I wasn't because God woke me up just at the right time before I hit a pillar or, or God spared my car when it spun around on ice in the middle of the mountains and there's cliffs and there's trees. I, I, I got to tell you, and not always does it happen because people do perish, but I know that God does this. He does honor honor your prayer, and God protect me. God protect my children. God protect my wife. God protect my husband. God protect me. Psalm 3, 1 through 3. Oh Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But, I love the word but, it's one of my favorite words. tell you a story about that some other day. But really what happens is that little three-letter word cancels out everything before it. Many are my enemies, my foes. How many are rising up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. But I'm here to tell you it doesn't matter what somebody else says or thinks. It doesn't matter if they think that you're beyond help or hope. It doesn't matter if, if even you believe somebody else is beyond help or hope. If they're, it, it, God has a but for you, and that but says, I cancel that out. But, Lord, you are a shield around me. Oh, Lord, you bestow glory on me, and you lift up my head. That, that, that term right there, lift up my head, is like when I am so weak, I cannot even hold my head up. I cannot even pick myself up off the ground because I've been beaten down so hard from the, the storms of life. I am down for the count. God scoops you up in his arms and he lifts your head and he strengthens you. God will protect you. Matthew 6, 13, and Jesus even taught us to pray and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver Deliver us from the evil one. God will deliver you from your sin. God will deliver you from your temptation. God will deliver you from your, your bondages. God will deliver you from your fears. God will deliver you from your depression. God will deliver you from whatever you fill in the blank right there. God will and can protect you and deliver you. So prayer, and this is my final thought as I, the musicians come. Prayer is when we Align our hearts with God's will. Back to our original thought. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So it's when I align my heart with the will of God. Because let's be honest, I can pray anything, right? I can pray, I can say words that are praying anything. I can pray, God, give me a Bentley. Lord, I pray that you give me a Bentley. Give me a Bentley by next Sunday. <laughs> Anybody know what a Bentley is? Yeah. You ever seen those Bentleys? They're, they're, they're like fine cars. Like way out of my league. That would be a miracle for me to have a Bentley. <laughs> but it's probably not God's will for me to have a Bentley. What, what use is a Bentley for me? Right? So I could pull up, say, oh, look at the miracle God gave me, a Bentley. I can pray lots of things. But when I submit to His will, Lord, not my will, but Yours be done. Now, do I need transportation? Yeah. God, I need a car. God, I need, maybe even I have a, my heart set on a particular thing. That's fine, whatever. I'm not saying don't have dreams and desires, but I'm saying pray the will of God. If we're tired of our prayers not being answered, let's maybe... Find out what the will of God is. So a couple things. We're taught in God's word that, first of all, we, many times we have not because we ask not. We, we don't ask. So number one, write it down. Starting today, I'm going to ask. But then the second little caveat to that is that the other reason why prayers aren't answered sometimes is because we ask amiss, as the wording says. It means we're asking for the wrong things. 
or ask him for a Bentley when God wants to give you a Honda Civic or whatever. Because I don't care what car you drive. I, I hope you drive nice cars. I hope you drive a car nicer than mine. Probably at the rate I'm going, you're always going to drive a car right, nicer than mine because I had a, another deer attack me yesterday. I'm like, it doesn't do me no good to buy a nice car here. I just keep getting attacked. But you, you get my point? My little silly thing's making a point. God wants to bless you. So I'm going to ask you to stand with me today. We've done a lot of praying this morning already, but we can never have too much prayer. That's right. And I'm going to ask you right now just to bow your heads. And I ask you, whether you fast or not, whether you even understand it or not, but starting on the 10th, if you will commit with me to the 21 days of fasting and prayer or fasting. Now, fasting without prayer is just a diet. We don't want to go on a diet. But at least to the development of your prayer life. And let's see what God does to align our hearts with His will. And I have a handout for you at the door as you go out that lines out three weeks of things to pray for if you need help. You don't have to do that. You can do it separately. It's just a tool. But I want us as a people to seek God. For his will. And if you're with me and you're in on this, just raise your hand right now. We're, we're going to pray and seek God like never before. Hands all across the building. That's awesome. Now let me pray for you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, as we commit the remainder of this month to you for prayer and for blessing and protection and influence in this community and in our homes and prayer for your presence, God. I pray that you would stir our hearts, that you would, throughout the day and throughout the night, that you would, throughout the night, you would wake us up and stir us to prayer and worship. Throughout the day, you would prompt us to pray for others and pray for ourselves. God, that you would bring us to a new level of prayer in Jesus' name, so that, God, we give you room to do what only you can do in our lives. We thank you, God. And everybody said, amen and amen.